I want to tell you the story of two secondary needle exchanges run by peers in the south of England during the 1990s that directly involved drug suppliers, or what you might call drug dealers. The first was a project involving a drug supplier who mostly supplied drugs to the gay men's hardhouse dance scene. He sold cocaine, ketamine, and a range of other party or complementary drugs. I was a customer of this supplier, and I also interacted with his customers as a peer educator and drug user activist. This involved supporting some of the early GHB and ketamine dependency cases on a peer-to-peer -peer basis and bridging access to services where needed. The customers of this supplier had repeatedly been at the forefront of a range of new drug-related trends and the supplier was active in promoting harm reduction strategies and he took his responsibility for his customers seriously. This included dyeing ketamine pink to reduce drug mixing, promoting the don't share tutors or snorting equipment message and giving advice about dosing and purity. When some of this supplier's customers started injecting cocaine, they didn't know where to get needles and syringes. The needle exchanges seemed strange and alien, targeted mostly at heroin and crack users. Injecting remained at that time culturally taboo on the London gay scene, and I heard of one person being beaten up and thrown out of a club after being caught injecting in the toilet. This ensured that this group kept a low profile, which made them a priority to target with a secondary NSP intervention through the supplier. In fact, I only ever met two of the group directly, but through indirect contact through the supplier, I was able to share harm reduction materials and advice and to answer questions and address concerns. This model worked because the relationship with the drug supplier was hidden, protecting him and his customers from exposure. This form of secondary needle exchange with drug suppliers can be very effective at reaching subpopulations of injectors. The second example was the North East Essex Outreach Service, run by a nurse and health promotion specialist called Keith Bolton. Keith set up a voluntary uh, program to deliver HIV outreach services to the heroin and amphetamine injectors living in the dispersed seaside area between Colchester and Clacton in the east of England. He was very committed to the community mobilisation and saw the benefits of this strategy. The poor transport links between the small villages and towns in this area made it difficult for people injecting drugs to access injecting equipment from the main needle exchange that was in the ancient town of Colchester. Keith managed to recruit members of the local suppliers network into his volunteer programme and this group of suppliers soon became the backbone of an effective peer-based needle exchange and peer education scheme running from Colchester right the way through to Clacton. The effectiveness of the programme was demonstrated by a researcher called Annette Walling, who tested the scheme by entering the drug scene through different contacts. She demonstrated that the programme had high level of engagement with the peer network, ensuring easy access to peer needle exchange for local users. She also showed that even those peer volunteers who no longer came to volunteer meetings were still promoting harm reduction within their peer networks. The scheme grew and the suppliers funded a drug user magazine in the area which talked about harm reduction, safer drug use and drug user rights. The wider members of this peer network formed an advocacy group called VOID or Voice of Injecting Drug Users. VOID then had peer representatives sitting on key policy committees but this created ill feeling with the police particularly when some of the representatives were suspected of being suppliers. However, these suppliers saw themselves as community leaders and most were small-scale friendship suppliers selling drugs to fund their own use. The challenge for the programme came when Keith left his position as an outreach worker. The management of the scheme was rearranged and a more conservative approach was taken. An undercover police operation was launched and this led to the vast majority of the suppliers being arrested with many receiving prison sentences for five years or more. This fractured a local supply network that had integrated and embraced harm reduction. This caused huge distrust and bad will, and this type of working arrangement was never again achieved. This example shows the huge potential of engaging a supply network as agents for harm reduction. However, it also shows the need to manage the legal environment. 
Unless tolerant policing agreements can be negotiated, such high profile schemes risk putting drug suppliers at risk. Now we'd like to see your videos about peer-based needle exchange. Please share them on Vimeo or YouTube using the tag peer NSP.